So, I am Greg Colvin. I work mainly on the uh, C++ EVM. Louder! I work mainly on the C++ VBM. This is my friend Martin, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Martin Beasy. Uh, I'm working on um, prototyping eWASM, and uh, I also work on um, Ethereum JS. And uh, hi, I'm Pavel, and I'm working on a small sub project called EVM JIT. It's a kind of just in time compiler that translates EVM bytecode into machine code using. LLVM project. Hey, I'm Christian Reitwiesner. I'm the team lead of the C++ implementation, and I'm also uh, working on Solidity, which is basically the main user of the Ethereum virtual machine. Hello, uh, my name is Alex Brex Sassi, and I work with Martin on eWASM, as well as with Christian on Solidity, and I'm really interested to improve both EVM1 and uh, the replacement of it called eWASM. So what I wanted to do this morning is everybody got working so fast approaching the conference, getting things done to talk about, that I could no longer keep track of anything but my own work. So I would sort of like to uh, just hear from people what they've been doing the last few months and what direction, what direction they intend for that to be heading in. Um, Shall we start with Martin? <laughs> yeah, sure. So the last couple months, uh, I've been working on something called EVM to WASM, which uh, takes EVM code and transcompiles it to WebAssembly. Uh, and we are now passing all the virtual machine tests and the official test repository. Uh, and we also have an online demo if you want to check it out. So, yeah. so what is a transpiler? Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's a good point. So we have two types of bytecode. Uh, we start out with um, Ethereum virtual machine bytecode, and we want to um, transform it to a new type of bytecode, WebAssembly. So uh, the trans compiler you can think in math terms as a function that maps uh, this one input, EVM, to a new uh, output, uh, WebAssembly. And why WebAssembly? Uh, the interesting pro well, okay, so WebAssembly is a uh, a new um, binary format that's targeted that's designed and be targeted for uh, the web and the web browser. Um, and the interesting properties that it has, and why we're interested in it, is um, it's very fast and efficient. It's portable. It's uh, size uh, uh, size efficiency. So. It's Easy to compress, easy uh, to load, um, and it also has, most importantly, uh, built-in. It, it's designed to run the web, so it's designed to run in untrusted environments, um, and that maps closely to what we're doing. So, yeah. Hey. Who next? So I can I can be next. <laughs> so. Um, the EVM JIT that Ethereum v virtual machine implementation I'm carrying off, uh, it's fully compliant with the EVM from, from the launch of, of the Ethereum. Uh, but the problem I was trying to solve from about a couple of months is how to bring this uh, implementation to, to other clients. So what I was working uh, on is um, a new C, C, C language interface for um, Ethereum virtual machine in general, uh, what we call EVMC. And it's like um, quite, quite simple uh, C interface. Then you can pack your VM implementation with and bring it to, to other, other, other projects that might be interested in. So just before the conference, I was able to plug EVMG to Python client. It's still syncing the blockchain, but I hope it can finish during this conference. <laughs> and 
Yeah, so it's, I'm not focusing on optimizing the, the execution time, but mostly to bringing uh, my project to other projects. So, so we now have a, a plug and play interface for both the C++ execution engine and the Python execution engine. Mm, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so the, the C++ client and Python client I able to use the same interface for EVM JIT to to be operational on the on the blockchain. So it's still experimental, but uh, it's very promising. That's really cool. <laughs> so that's that. Basically, the idea is to have a uh, common interface between the the client and the virtual machine, and in the end, be able to to swap different virtual machines. And we're also planning to. Uh, to refactor the C++ interpreter to use exactly the same interface, so you could seamlessly swap between uh, just-in-time compiler and the interpreter, and you can use the interpreter with all uh, client implementations that support that interface. Very nice. Very nice. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> that will be at the party later. I have to go buy a guitar if anybody knows a good place. <laughs> what else here? Alex. Is it me? All right. Um, yeah, you will, uh, you will learn about eWASM later on. It will be the first presentation today after lunch. And I invite everyone to listen to it because it will be very interesting. <laughs> But I can tell you upfront a few details, which connects to this panel, uh, that mostly we have been working on uh, two different things. First of all, as Martin has mentioned, uh, WASM is a different bytecode. So we need multiple languages to compile code to this bytecode, because you don't want to write bytecode by hand. And secondly, you want to run this bytecode on something. Um, on the language side, we have been working on getting C and Solidity ready. And we have written a lot of contracts in these languages already for WASM. And on the, the VM side, actually, we are really grateful to Pavel and his work on EVMC uh, because we have implemented a VM on EVMC. And that means eWASM can be used with uh, C++ Ethereum without any major changes. Thank you, Pavel. Why would you want to write contracts in C? You don't really want to write contracts as an end user in C, but there are certain contracts which probably make sense to be written in C. And I don't really want to go into a lot of detail. You will see a bit more in the presentation. Uh, but just think about the precompiles we already have, uh, the four precompiles, like SHA-256, RIPEMD-160, and EC recovery. You want those to be written in a highly efficient way, and those should be included by all the VMs. And you don't really want to have them as a precompile anymore in the future. So those are written in C right now, and they are a limited set of, of code which you can much easily verify. I wouldn't advise anyone to write a, like a really complex contract in C unless they know what they're doing. The solidity is hard enough, it turns out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is. the thing is also that, that a lot of code already exists in C, especially cryptographic uh, uh, libraries. They are already in C. They have been tested. They are working. And if we can just take them without modification, that's great. The advance of crypto code is written in C and well, long since well tested. Hmm. That's the assumption. That's the assumption that they are well tested. <laughs> It's not always a good assumption. When, when people complain about solidity being too hard, though, I, I point out that most of the world's most reliable software has been engineered in C. <laughs> most of your paychecks probably are, are, uh, come out of an Oracle system, which was written in C. So that it, in the end, it comes down to engineering discipline more than anything. Um, 
So I really think the, uh, the EVMC interface is, is really a powerful idea that's going to help us quite a lot in pulling together the different work, um, providing the diversity we've talked about without um, balkanizing. Speak up, Greg. Without balkanizing the work, we can have a diverse number of implementations of Ethereum without them being in separate silos that can't run together, that can't talk to each other. Yeah. So, so I think you can uh, even do more about that, like having multiple implementations of VM itself, you can build uh, quite complex structures of that. I mean, you can decide upfront which implementation you want to, to use for this particular code or just select them randomly to avoid any, any crashes. How's that? You can implement like some kind of VM that actually composites other VM uh, behind it. So is it going to be part of the VMC interface or at a higher level that you do things like start out with an interpreter? No, you can use the same interface for higher level. Like you can write a VM that composes other VMs but still ex uh, uh, exports the same interface EVMC. No, I mean, um, like typically you start out running an interpreter, you notice the hot spots, you, ha pan you hand those off to a JIT for faster execution. Um, you may do the compilation on a separate thread because it could take a while. Um, is that part of the interface or will that be a level up? Yeah, it, it's all possible with, with this EVMC interface. Okay. So basically, the interface only defines the entry points and the way the VMs can ask for data from the blockchain. And that's very generic, and it only gives you the bare minimum you need. And uh, because of that, you can compose uh, multiple levels if you wanted. So the composition would be at another level. If we wanted to, we could abstract that, but we haven't yet. No, it works on the same. It works on the same level. Because basically, you just get in the, the contract to execute, and then you can initially run it as an interpreter if you wanted, and you can change it over. Right, right. So what's the, what's the timing on this? I'm always asking, and it's always fuzzy and changing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for uh, WebAssembly uh, specifically, it, it depends on the WC3 uh, working group, but um, as it stands now, it's implemented in all the major uh, browsers, and it's on the uh, 12th revision uh, of prototype. So I think it's getting pretty close. I would expect it in 2017 um, to finalize the spec. Uh, after that, then we can move on to um, finalizing our EAP. Um, as we stand with a prototype, we, we have most of the major components implemented. Um, next big thing we're going to be pushing out is a test network. Uh, once again, brought to, to us by, uh, facilitated by um, EVMC, mm -hmm. since we can just uh, drop the WASM, the WASM uh, JIT or an interpreter into all the other clients. And yeah, so that's pretty cool. That's great fun. Have we used up our 20 minutes yet? <laughs> I have a you question. You have six minutes left. We have six whole minutes. Now I have a question. Um, I cannot see anything but the most blinding white lights I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, did you want we'll to say you know. about security, Christian? So uh, the, the original EVM was designed from the ground up to uh, have fixed bounds on resource consumption, and these bounds should coincide with the gas usage. What do we know about existing eWASM implementations in that regard? Okay. Uh, so regarding security in the virtual machine, I think like the number one biggest security issue though is the trusted computing base. 
And that's continually expanding with every pre-compiled that we add. So the point of uh, WebAssembly from a security perspective, and it is from a security perspective, is to minimize the overall trust and computing base. Now security from the metering perspective is done by EVM to WASM, or sorry, uh, it's done by metering injection. So we can do static analysis on the code to find um, it's very well delineated in WebAssembly the flow control. So it's easy to do static analysis on the flow control and inject metering statements at the beginning of each branch, possible branch condition that will meter it. Um, the same applies to memory usage. So it provides, uh, uh, so the, the gas model and the memory model, as far as metering, is going to work the same way with the added benefit that it's decoupled from the EVM uh, uh, by default. So it's not, we have a nice separation of concerns there. And uh, I think that also provides extra security because we can think about these two components separately now. We can think about, okay, here is our uh, metering injection algorithm, right? Uh, we can examine that. Uh, and then we have a separate team, a separate module altogether examining it and looking at our trusted computing base, which would be the uh, WASM VM. So two folds there. Minimizing the trusted computing base that I think is the, the biggest uh, lowest hanging fruit, most bang for the buck, right? As far as increasing security in our network. But do we know whether the, I mean, so for example, memory will probably be paid uh, with regard to the, the memory of the, so this, the virtual memory of the virtual machine and not with regards to the memory of the actual physical implementation. I mean, it's easy for memory because it, probably won't scale quadratically, but there could be some other edge cases that, uh, yeah, could hurt us at some point. So, yeah, the memory is very explicitly allocated with WebAssembly. Uh, you use expand memory and there's initial uh, memory allocation, so the program declares up front in the binary format, okay, we're starting with this amount of memory, here's what we're going to have in memory. Um, so it's actually kind of like a L format if you're familiar with uh, how, uh, you know, L format initializes programs. Um, and then whenever you need more memory, there's an opcode uh, expand memory. So it's very clear where all the memory expansions can happen. And uh, yeah, that's where we uh, inject our metering. So that's sort of Just like uh, an S break opcode. Sorry. Like the S break in old Unix. Oh, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. To, you have to tell me about that. It is similar to that. Okay. <laughs> okay. SBRK. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just a quick note on um, on the metering part. Um, so it's it's entirely decoupled from the execution time. Uh, we have the input bytecode, which doesn't have metering, because we don't trust the input compilers. So anyone who compiles Ewasm, we don't really want to trust them to include metering in a correct way. Um, so when it gets to the um, execution time, we will inject these metering statements into the right places in the bytecode. And during runtime, there's no need to do anything special. All those metering statements are just calls to a specific function. Uh, so this kind of works like how um, a JIT works. Um, like the LLVM JIT we have uh, for EVM. But we do this upfront before execution. So it should be much faster. And another interesting point, uh, Greg, so you were thinking about like doing the metering in another thread, correct? Right? Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Ah. Uh, so. <laughs> well, it would work, but I don't think it's going to be any faster. Oh, okay. Um, that, that is, um, it would save time on the very most expensive instructions, which cost enough that it's not worth saving time and on long runs of just doing addition and multiplication and arithmetic, you're not going to save enough to bother, especially if you're going to push all of that to the end of a basic block. But like doing a call cost enough that saving a bit of time doing the metering on the call. Right. Yeah. Um, I was just I was going to say like, um, we sort of can do that now. It's a little bit hacky, but we sort of get get the 
uh, separation concerns for free because like um, whenever we call out to the interface to do the metering, mm -hmm. that's going to be possibly running on a separate thread. So, um, but I don't know how much that's improving our performance either. So, <laughs> how cheap are your threads? Uh, right now we're using V8 to prototype, so we get eight threads by default, uh, and they're uh, allocated when it, uh, it starts up. So they're fairly cheap, very cheap actually. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.